So in this week's video, we're reviewing how to create network diagrams so you can master this and pass your CAPM and PMP exam on your first try. Now before we get started, my name is Alvin and I'm here to help you pass your CAPM and PMP exam on your first try. So if this is your first time watching my videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that bell icon, and smash that like button so you're notified when my next video comes out. And don't forget to download your exclusive free workbook of 100 practice questions over at alvinthepm.com forward slash ebook. So on your exam, you may see a question which asks you the following. Create a network diagram using the information presented in the table and determine its critical path. In today's video, we're going to create a network diagram based upon the information in this table. Network diagrams can be fun and really easy to solve, and I want to show you my simple and effective three-step process so you can answer these questions correctly on the day of your exam. The first step that I follow is that I write down each activity as a node or a box as I've shown on the slide, and I connect it to its predecessor activity. In other words, what activity occurs before it. I then repeat this for all the other activities shown in the table. And lastly, for step three, I fill in the durations for each activity node. Sounds simple enough, right? I want you to pause the video and try to see if you can create the network diagram that's shown on the screen using my three-step process. Come back once you've solved it and let's compare answers. Starting from the top, the predecessor to activity A is start and the successor is activity B. So we create and connect each node as follows. Looking not too bad so far. So moving along, we see that the predecessor to activity C is also start and its successor is activity D. Now here's the updated network diagram. As you can see, we're slowly starting to build out the network diagram. Let's move along to the next two rows in the table. And here's where it may get a little tricky. The predecessor to activity E is activity B and the predecessors to activity F are two activities, B and D. So once we update our diagram with these two connections, we can see that we're starting to have multiple convergences into activity F. This means that activities B and D both feed into activity F. And for the last and final rows in the table, the predecessor to activity G is activity D. The predecessors to activity H are two activities, F and G, and lastly, the predecessors to end are activities E and H. So after you make these updates, we now have the final completed diagram as shown on the screen. So on your exam, make sure you double check your work to make sure you don't miss any connections between each activity. Now using the information in the table, fill in the durations for all of the activities. So as you can see, network diagrams are not meant to be tricky and are actually really fun to solve. Think of it like solving a puzzle. So make sure you use my three-step process to help simplify things when you encounter these types of questions on your exam. First, start out by writing down each activity as a node or a box and identify and connect it to activities which occur before it or what's known as the predecessor activity. Rinse and repeat this for all of the other activities. And lastly, fill in the durations for all of the nodes. And with that completed, you'll have a final network diagram. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because in next week's video, we're going to cover the critical path, one of the most important topics on your CAPM and PMP exam that you definitely need to master and you definitely don't want to miss out. So be sure to subscribe to my channel, smash that like button, and share this with a friend. Until next time, I'm Alvin the PM, helping you become certified in project management, and I'll see you in next week's video.